Hi, my name is Chris Skorlinski. I'm with the Microsoft SQL Server Escalation Services team, and this is another edition of REPL Talk. I thought it might be helpful if I post an example of using the SP REPL done command to mark all transactions as being replicated. We've used this command to skip over a batch of delete commands that were accidentally run on the publisher. This prevented the delete from being pushed down to the distribution database and then down to the subscriber. Now, we could have allowed the logger to pick up the rows and then had the distribution agent skip, but the delete was 100 million rows. We found it just easier to skip them at the log reader. This command is found in the SQL Server books online. The books online states that the publication should be reinitialized after this command is run. Now, we recommend this to ensure that the publisher and subscriber have the same data. However, as we'll see, this is not always required. Let's take a look at the row on the publisher. I have the AdventureWorks database. I created a publication on it. And I've already pushed it down to my subscriber. Now, for my demo purposes, I like to go ahead and have better control over the log reader. So I'm going to go and remove the continuous parameter from the log reader. This gives me a little better control over when I can stop and start the log reader. In fact, let's go ahead and stop the job. Success. And I'm also going to go ahead and see if I've got the distribution agent stopped. So let's take a look at first, we're going to go ahead and do an update on the publisher. Just to kind of make sure everything is working right. And let's select both the publisher and the subscriber. And I should see it's not on the subscriber yet. It's not been picked up the log reader. So let me start the log reader job. And log reader finished. And let's go ahead and start the distribution agent up and push that down to the subscriber. There we go. Again, I have them set to run not continuous, so I can control when they start and when they stop. Let's kind of clear that up a little bit. Now let's go ahead and make a second transaction. And again, if I look at the publisher and subscriber, I'll see it on the publisher. Log reader is stopped, so that row is still sitting in the transaction log. And if I want to verify that, I can run this command. SP REPL, SP REPL show commands. And this shows me any rows that are still pending in the transaction log that have not yet been picked up by the log reader. And there it is. There's my trans command. You can see it's tran2. It's actually I'm replicating these as store procedures, not as actual update statements, just which is the default. So I can see the name of the store procedure that would be called on the subscriber, and then the row that's going to be updated on the subscriber. Now we have another command called dbcc open tran. I can also run that command, and that command shows me pending transactions that are sitting in the log. And here I can see it right here. Non-distributed transaction. And if I look at it, the hex 384, that actually uh, matches up to this value we saw from the REPL show commands. That gave me the commit transaction and dbcc open tran just happens to show me the begin transaction. I can see the colon one at the end. I'm really using this to see and verify that there is a transaction sitting in the transaction log. Now another way I can do it is we have a function called fndb log and if I want to see that begin and commit in there 
could also take a look at it. It'll be a, look a little bit more cryptic, but we can see it. Just give me a second to do a little bit of cut and paste here. Now the parameters for this function is basically the begin log, transaction number, and the uh, I'm sorry, the begin LSN and the end LSN. And if I copy them, paste them right. There we go. So now I can see that indeed in the log there is a begin tran starting at one and a commit tran here at the four, and the data and the record is set to replicate. Again, these are really just helping me verify the same thing I see when I execute the REPL show commands. I'm seeing a transaction ID and I'm seeing the command sitting there. Now, take a look at the books online. It says if you want to mark all transactions as having been already replicated, we can execute this REPL done command. And you can see I have a begin tran and a commit tran, and I'm setting those to null. I'm telling it to mark all the transactions in the log as having been replicated. Let's take a look back at the REPL show commands. No transactions. How about the open tran? Let's see what that gives us. Again, no transactions. So we've just noted in the log that that transaction that was there for TRAN2, we've noted in the log that that row has already been replicated to the distributor. In a sense, we've skipped over that row. Now, since we're touching and calling these log reader commands, before I can go on, I want to go ahead and run this SP REPL flush. What that command does is it tells Management Studio basically to release any caching it has on the transaction log. So when I run the log reader normally, I'll be able to go ahead and move the rows onto the distributor. So now let's see what happens if we go and run another update statement. And let's take a look at what's in our publisher and subscriber right at this point. And we should have just TRAN3 sitting here on the publisher, and we should have uh, back to TRAN1 sitting here on the subscriber because we've skipped TRAN2 altogether. And I've not restarted the log reader and I've not restarted the distributor so that's why the TRAN3 is not moved on down. So let's go ahead and start up the log reader. And we should see, it should look in the log, and see it says one transaction with one command. So that TRAN2 one, we just skipped over that one. Now to verify, I'm going to go ahead and run the distribution agent. That'll pick up whatever was in the distribution database and move it down the subscriber. Now let's see what data we get. There we go. TRAN3 shows up in both. So as you can see, this REPL done command was used to mark the transaction, that TRAN2, as being already replicated. Now this command is a little dangerous because if there was a transaction there that I didn't wasn't aware of, maybe it was made by another user, and we've just gone in with the null null parameters for the begin TRAN and the commit TRAN, we maybe marked another transaction, or actually we marked all the transactions being replicated, which means those rows will not be moved to the distribution database and not be moved to the subscriber. So we use this command only kind of an emergency to go ahead and mark all transactions being replicated, but then normally we do reinitialize a subscriber just to ensure that the publisher and subscriber are in sync. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Again, this is Chris Skorlinski from the Microsoft SQL Server Escalation Team, and this was REPL Talk.